I'm working on a simple bookshelf to hang on the wall in my office. The top and bottom panels are 36mm thick with a 24mm divider. From where I sit, it'll look something like this, although in this picture the scale's a bit wrong. In reality, it's going to be a little bit bigger than this one. When it's done, I'm just going to paint it a simple flat white, maybe with a blue stripe. So I've got my cut list here, and I've got a bunch of MDF. These are 2400 by 300 at 18 mil thick, and I'm going to make a start on uh, getting the cuts done. And hopefully I'll get all the cuts done at least today, and then some of the assembly, maybe some of the glue up. So I've got the cuts done for the inside box and what I'm going to do now is cut a 45 degree uh, bevel on the outside of all of these four pieces. The reason why I'm doing that probably um, would be best to show you later on once I've done it but it's a te technique I got from uh, Gosford Handyman. I'll link that down below. Um, really cool uh, way to avoid having to deal with painting the edge grain of MDF. Next thing to do is cut down the boards for the outer box and using my cut list uh, I need um, the length of my inner box plus 18 mil either side, so 964 plus 18 plus 18, that comes to a thousand, so a thousand mil. Yeah, so that's a thousand mil. That could have been way worse. Things are going pretty well here. I've cut uh, almost all of the pieces. Um, we had one problem where someone cut one of the bevels on the wrong side. Um, I don't know what the hell happened there. I, I sent that guy home for the day anyway. Other exciting news. Quite a bit of burn on this piece from the table saw blade. Unfortunately, I've just realized that I've this up royally, that I've screwed this up royally. I did all the cuts for this a couple of weeks ago. It was a sunny day, so we'll call it Sunday. And then by the time I got back to it, about a week later, I'd been working all week and I was completely fried. I, I guess it must have been Friday. By this point I knew that the video was already more than five minutes long and I hadn't done anything apart from cut up a bunch of MDF. So I went ahead and glued and screwed it. And when I came back to it a few days later, there was this. 
I had completely forgotten to cut to final length. It's not good. I guess I can fix it in post-production. Or maybe Photoshop. And if that doesn't work, my plan B is that I've already been down to Bunnings and bought more wood. No biggie. Four mil, and once it's attached and I check the size of it against the uh, the other components, then I'll trim this uh, four mil of excess. So it seems that we have recovered from imminent disaster and this thing now fits very well. The uh, trim lines there are quite nice. Despite much trouble or much hassle with the circular saw trimming them off, last night my producers and editors were asking me why I didn't just use a trim router. Well, that turned out okay. We've made up for lost time. It's glue up time, which always makes me nervous. I kind of knew this would happen, but obviously with weed, um, splines going in like on an angle, I can't just put this piece in from the top without splaying these pieces out to the side, so 
it's not going to go in, I'm just going to bash this in. At this point things descended into a gluey chaotic mess of clamps and tape and blocks of wood and ratchet tie down straps and gaps. I'm heading out into the workshop in a minute and I'm kind of nervous about this glue up, how it's gone. Um, I couldn't really sleep all last night. I, It's turned out way more shaky and out of focus than I'd ever imagined. Anyway, we'll just get on with it. I'm just going over it with 120 grit just to get rid of any little overhangs and uh, little bumps and bits of glue that have squeezed out. And it's looking okay. I'll just finish up with the sanding and then fill in a few little gaps here and there with wood filler. And then I guess I'll go over it with 240. Um, smelly filler. Some 8 gauge 40 mil nails. And I'm a bit worried about the weight of this thing on the wall, so I'm using tons of nails. I've got 3, 5, 7, 9, 10, I've got 13 holes drilled. Um, so. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully that all works out good. Oh my lovely shelf, are you ready for paint? going for my best ever finish on this one so I've gone out and bought a new roller and a new brush and these came recommended by Joey Chalk at King Post Timberworks it's so cool to have local guys making local recommendations you can just go down to the shop and buy exactly the same thing I did the primer coat. I gave it a quick sanding um, with 320, nothing too crazy, you know, just beer in a couple of shots kind of level. And it come up, come up mint. 
and uh, this has been a great foundation for this first top coat. I'm just finishing up top coat number one and I'm probably going to do four coats. It seems like a good number. I don't mind doing four coats. Four is one of my one of my nine favorite numbers under ten. So what the heck, eh? As I waited for the final three top coats to dry, I entertained myself by playing the new M chord on the guitar. I amused myself trying to laugh like Nick Offerman. But through all this drying time, I felt compelled to engage with you, the viewer, because, well, you've made it through the whole 16 minutes and 30 seconds of this video, only to now find yourself literally watching paint dry. And this was supposed to be a simple bookshelf to hang on the wall in my office. If I were you, I guess I would just hit the subscribe button and leave a comment. Ideal for filling in gaps. What if I can use this stuff on my memory from my early 20s?